What's up guys, GT here and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I wanted to show you two features that I've been using quite a lot of late and I find them really helpful in terms of my workflow and they've been helping me quite a lot in dialing tone as well. Now I made another video earlier on this channel which covered three other features which are really helpful for your workflow so make sure you go ahead and check that video out as well. Now before we get started I want to quickly call out that this video is not about tone and this video is not about playing so keep that in mind when you're watching this video. This video is more about how you can use these tools to make your workflow a little better. All right, so the first tool that I want to cover is called templates. Now, before I go ahead and talk about templates, I want to ask you a question. Let's jump to a different preset. Let's say, let's say jump to a stock preset, which is 343. Uh, this is a stock preset. And I want to ask you this question. Everybody's got a favorite amp and a favorite cab and some favorite settings, right? For me, it's the 2C++, to be honest. I want to ask you how much time would it take you to kind of dial in your favorite cab and a favorite amp in this preset, to be honest. For me, I think it will be quite a lot of time because I have to clear off all of these blocks or I can reset the preset to blank preset and then dial in block by block. Regardless which approach you take, I think it's quite time consuming and it's a bit tedious to do it from scratch. But what if I told you there was a simpler way to do it and I can save you a lot of clicks and there's, that's where the templates come into the rescue. So let's jump back to our other preset of interest. Let's say you've got this preset over here, which is nothing but, uh, you know, a Bogner uh, Ecstasy Euro Blue. Uh, it's amp and a cab and a reverb, nothing very fancy going on in there. Everything's at stock. So, you know, as I said, this video is not about tone. What if this setting was a favorite of yours and you want to use this as a starting point whenever you want to dial in tone? So that's where the templates can really be helpful. Now, what is templates? Templates pretty much is, as the word pretty much explains itself, it takes all the settings of your preset and your signal chain and save this as a template for you to reuse later as a starting point or as a reference point or whatever use case you want to look at. So how do you do that? What I can do is I can show you how to save it as a template. You can go to preset and then say save as template. And now you can give it a name over here. Let's say, you know, Bogner Blue. And then what you can do is click on save. Keep in mind that these are getting saved on your computer. So I'm guessing this is pretty much a Axe edit feature and not a front panel or the hardware feature of the Axe FX2. So I'm going to save this as a, uh, you know, a template and now it's got saved. Obviously nothing changed on the screen, but now let's say I go to another preset. Let's just go back to the preset that I was talking about earlier. Let's just go back to that stock preset. And now I want to initialize this preset with my favorite settings. What you can do is actually say preset new from template. So far two clicks, right? Third click, fourth click, boom. Everything is set up for you and all your settings are pretty much there in front of you. It just took four clicks and I think you can double click and save yourself one click as well over there. So it didn't take that much time for you know me to initialize this preset and I've got all the settings that I saved in there in the signal chain pretty much from scratch for me. Now, how is it helpful? I'll give you a use case in my scenario as well. A lot of the times and pretty much most of the times when I dial in tone on this channel, I start from a blank preset and I dial in block by block from there and I save that preset and then I roll it out on the exchange. So pretty much I don't have a blank preset at any given point in time in my entire XFX2. That's where I have saved it as a template. And that's where it really helps me a lot. So I've got a blank preset template saved here. When I click on that, it recreates the blank preset for me, just connects the signal chain, uh, no blocks added, just the pure DI signal of the guitar. And it even gives it a name of blank preset. So that's templates and that's really, really helpful. I think you should use it quite a lot. If you're not using it, if you are, good on you. I think it's a very good feature for me to use as well. And I've been using this, as I said, quite a lot lately. All right. The next feature I want to talk about is global blocks and how it is different from blocks library, right? So I did cover blocks library in the previous video that I was mentioning about. So do go ahead and watch that. Now, global blocks, if you are from a programming background, you will relate better with me. Think of them as a global variable, right? In your code base, you change it once and it changes everywhere inside your entire code base. Think of it as like that. So how does it apply in the Axe 2 scenario? You can save any particular block 
keep in mind except the tone match block as a global block you've got 10 slots for each block and that can be used inside any preset anywhere in the AxeFX2 and once you update any of that particular blocks each block each instance of that global block will get updated sounds confusing right so let's take a use case scenario and i'll talk you through it i've got three presets here let's say 98 preset a 99 is preset b and 100 is preset c all these three presets have got different amps in there what is common between them is the cap now i've got the same cap just using a stock cap here in your scenario this could be a user cap or a purchased ir which you really like a lot and you've been using it a lot it really fits your gear well and you've got it mic'd up with the 57 dynamic mic and the low cut and high cut are pretty much the way you see it on the screen everything's at maxed out to be honest and you've got the same cab used on all three presets preset a preset b and preset c and you are at a live gig and you want to use these three presets or you're in a studio and you want to use these three presets for your recording or for your session but the sound engineer or the you know sound guy tells you that hey your presets sounding too sharp you know maybe cut the high cut a little bit you know or maybe change the mic make make it sound a little warmer round it off a little bit for whatever reasons you want to change the cap a little bit but now you've got a situation here that using the same cap across three presets the only way to do it is go ahead and change it in all three all three presets which is quite time consuming to be honest and that's where global blocks come to the rescue what you can do is you can save that cab as a global block and reuse it across the three presets and whenever you update any setting inside one of those instances it's going to update in all three so let's go ahead and do that i think when i explain it in you know in an actual scenario it will make much more sense so i've got this cab here let's go ahead and link it to a global block so you buy how you do global blocks you come down here to the global block section and you click on this drop down here opens up three options for you uh, i'll talk about them four options to be honest i'll talk about them in detail first one is save and link now i've already got one you know, you know global block saved for a cab now keep in mind if you're working with cab one all your global blocks that you save will be applicable to cab one only and not cab two and vice versa so i'm going to save this as a global block in the second slot here which is zero two you've got 10 slots as i mentioned earlier we click on that it's going to save it and link it and you can save it see it over here it says cab blocks global blocks zero two cab one and you can you can see it on the front panel as well to be honest uh, but for this video i'm showing the accelerator to save the preset this is a one-time effort that you'll have to do go back to the other presets select the cab and now in this case, you don't want to do save and link it because you've already saved it. You want to do load and link. So you want to make sure you are at the right slot and select that. And now it's going to load and link that block and pretty much all the settings are going to come through. It's not change anything because we haven't done anything at the moment. So save that one as well. And let's go to preset A as well again and then do the same thing over there. Load and link. Cab one, slot number zero two, and save that as well. Now, here comes the interesting part. I'm gonna change a bunch of things in this cab and let's see if it reflects across the different three presets, as I mentioned. Let's bring down the high cut to around, you know, 7K, for example, too bright. Let's bring it down a little bit. Let's change the mic as well to, let's say, R21, R121 ribbon mic. Let's keep the cab where it is and I'm gonna add a bit of proximity as well. Now I'm going to save this over here. I think you have to save it for it to affect across different presets. Let's go to preset B and see if this changes actually happen. Now when I select the cab over here, you can see everything that I changed inside that block has got reflected in preset B as well. And I can go to the third preset as well and see that it's reflected there as well. And now I can do things over here as well. Let's say I you know push up the high cut all the way again and i can go back to presets 99 and 98 and i can show you that it's actually going to change over there as well which is fantastic isn't it now you've got a block which you can control and it updates across the axe effects to wherever you've used the global block as an instance 
Now, the other things that you can do with this is obviously at any point in time, you do not like the linking and you want to unlink that and you don't want it to impact whenever you change that global block, you can say unlink and that's going to unlink the block from there and any changes then will not obviously impact it. You can also do load without linking what this pretty much is self-explanatory, but I'll tell you what it is. It will load that particular global block, but it will not link it. So you change anything in this global block or in this preset, it will not impact the other presets wherever that global block is being used. I think that's pretty much it. That's the global blocks and templates. Hope these two tools or these two features will help you in your workflow as well. And if you like the video, make sure you go ahead and like it and leave me a comment below as to what you would use these two features for. And if if you knew about them already, have you been using them? And uh, what are the other features that you would like me to cover as well in the future videos? As always, thank you so much for watching guys and your support. And until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you all keep safe and keep rocking. Cheers. Bye-bye.